Hey, I'm Shy Fox, and in this video, I'm going to explain my art process for how I draw this semi-realistic anime-inspired portrait, such as this. I begin by having a rough idea of what I wanted to draw along with some images, uh, references of head angles, possible lighting, and anything else that might help me generate ideas as I move through the creation of this piece. Then I start by sketching the head. I follow the Loomis method. I really like this method for drawing heads. And I have a video teaching how I approach the Loomis method for drawing heads if you want to check that out. Any links mentioned will be in the description though, so you can go back and check those out at your own convenience or perhaps when you finish this video. But the general idea with the Loomis method is to divide the head into sections at whatever angle and place the facial features in the correct spot based on the average head. Now with this piece, my focus was mainly going to be on making a beautiful face and then a composition to complement that face and draw attention to it. So I spend quite a bit of time sketching in the facial features and because this is digital art, I'm able to easily manipulate the parts of the face I had drawn and do things like move the eyes over, increase their size and make all these micro adjustments to get the face slowly closer and closer to the look that I want. I'm not the type of artist that gets it right the first time when I draw something. I have to do lots of tweaks and adjustments and knowing what to fix and how you know to fix it as I go comes with experience of having drawn faces before. It also comes from comparing to my references, the reference images and figuring out how mine could be better. Flipping the canvas around also helps me see things with a fresh perspective. At this point I have the hair drawn in and I have the concept of like how I want this whole piece to look and I'm starting to think about things like having a simple background concept to complement my portrait and that is going to give me a basis for beginning to think about like lighting and how I'm going to do shadows and lighting. So I go in and actually block in some of the main sections of the skin first and I decided I would try something a little different and do everything in black and white. So doing the skin and everything sort of black and white first and think about colors as sort of an afterthought in this piece because in general it is definitely more valuable to think about well values um, more than we're thinking about color to think about values first and by values I really just mean your lights and your darks and how they work together. Um, I think sometimes artists get really stuck and lost in the ideas of like colors and really focusing on colors and just forgetting about you know how lights and darks impacts our colors. So by focusing on one at a time, um, I was just kind of practicing my values is what that comes down to. So so practicing my lighting and putting some fun lighting on the on the face to see what, what can work. And, and a lot of what I was doing, I felt like wasn't working. So it was a lot of try this, try that, and eventually settling for something that I think would work, just sort of a slight lighting on the side of the face there. But one thing I'm trying to practice more is interesting lighting concepts. And I think having good reference images really helps with that because it can be hard to like completely make that up and invent it out of, out of your brain. So again, reference images are, are a really big part of my process. And then by this point, I'm actually thinking about adding in color and pops of color that I think would be important. I wanted to make the eyes kind of glow. And that was just something I knew going into this that I wanted to do. I'll admit that I, I really struggled mentally through this piece. I like was hating my art the whole time through this. And it just like wasn't quite up to my like typical standards that I feel like I should be hitting. And so I was like really like stressing while painting this, um, being, you know, all the extra hard on myself that I probably shouldn't have been, but I decided I wasn't going to give up. I just really wanted to complete something. So sometimes when I'm struggling and I'm just not liking what I'm seeing, it's kind of an opportunity to start experimenting and do doing things maybe I wouldn't normally do. So when I wasn't happy by about this point with colors, I switched them and just kind of lightened everything up, just kind of like a totally different tones actually went and adjusted the tonal values of the whole piece until it looked different, like completely different in some ways that like it transformed and slowly again making these tweaks throughout and that's the beauty of digital art is you're not committed to any single thing you do. We can always go back and change it. It is limitless with the changes we can make. So I felt like the saving grace of this piece when my initial values of that like dark black hair on there uh, wasn't quite working. Uh, the saving grace was essentially changing those tonal values. And when I'm struggling through a piece, I start thinking about things like, how can I save this? How can I fix it? What could I do different? And uh, one of the things I ultimately do change by the end of this piece and sort of commit to when it's finished is actually 
putting the piece on its side. It's kind of like a little trick that if the face just doesn't look perfect, just like rotate the, the canvas 90 degrees any direction and just see how that looks. So that was just something I ended up doing. Just wanted to note, I definitely found myself doing a lot of trial and error throughout this process and just kept trying things little tone tweak, little eye adjustment, face adjustment, smoothing out some lines in the hair, just doing whatever I could think to try and improve the piece. And then sometimes I find that you can help a piece by adding more in. So I thought maybe I'll add in some like sparkles and flashy bits and rainbow things and see if that kind of almost draws less attention to some of the aspects of it that I don't like. I felt like her hair looked rather spidery, I guess is how I want to describe it, a little harsh. And I just wanted to feel a little softer. So I guess I went back and did smooth things out too. And some changes to the lighting of the hair did help. And then I got sort of um, fun with some of the brush strokes in there and actually went in with a textured brush and, you know, put some textured brush strokes in there just just to see what that would do it was just an experimentation thing and then by this point i was actually using the liquify tool a bit and making those final changes to the face and doing some comparisons before after you could see maybe turning layers on and off as i compared and then actually enhancing some saturation and again rotating the canvas i did end up with this canvas rotated 90 degrees and it was more like phone wallpaper style in the end and you know that's what i just i liked it that way and that's sort of what i what i went with and that's pretty much it for this piece i hope you liked the video like and subscribe if you did and learned something i have lots more videos like this same type of videos as this and other art tutorials that may help you improve your art so be sure to do that and i'll see you in another video